this person claims the Steam Controller's touch D-pad sucks because it lacks feedback. Let's talk about that. Hey everyone, Mininth here. In this video, I'll be going over the basics of the touch D-pad on the Steam Controller and demonstrating why I've chosen particular settings, as well as giving some tips and tricks for getting used to it. To keep continuity with my speedrun, I'm back in Hollow Knight. I'm also going to be using Steam's unfortunately limited HUD to demonstrate changes as I make them. You can access the HUD by bringing up the BPM overlay and pressing the Toggle Controller HUD button. Opening up the configurator, I've got a generic gamepad template loaded for demonstration. Selecting the left pad and pressing A shows all the settings for it. While there are a lot, I'll only be going over the basics. Firstly, requires click. Unlike traditional D-pads, there is only one physical button under the touchpad. This means the touchpad will be using your thumb's location to determine which direction is sent regardless of the setting. Adding the extra requirement of having to press that button in order to send input makes the experience worse, so it's best to turn it off and go touch only. Touch only does feel weird at first, but that can be overcome while requiring the click will always be an added stress. Even with it set to off, you can touch the pad without sending input. All D-pad modes have a dead zone, which is an area in the center of the touchpad where no input will be sent. The next setting is the layout dropdown. Starting with 8-way overlap, this layout divides the touchpad into 8 slices, kind of like a pizza. It's arranged so a slice is at each cardinal direction, and then another slice is in the diagonals. Those diagonal slices are overlap zones, and allow you to hit diagonal inputs. 8-way then has an overlap region slider. This slider changes how large the diagonal slices are relative to the cardinal slices. Its default setting puts all slices at an equal size. Further right emphasizes diagonals, and further left emphasizes cardinals. While the HUD doesn't adequately reflect changes to this slider, it is possible to see the difference in video playback. Because the default overlap setting in 8-way equalizes button size, 8-way is good for anything that relies on the timing of combos. While I don't play fighting games, so take this with a grain of salt, I imagine it would do well here as I do use 8-way for something else combo related, emulating ABXY on the right touchpad. In Hollow Knight for this purpose, a combo would be something like holding A while tapping X or vice versa, and I have found that to be most consistently possible in 8-way. 4-way with no overlap divides the touchpad in a similar manner to 8-way, only it lacks the diagonal slices. In this mode, there are no overlap zones, and therefore diagonal inputs are not possible. While the HUD still shows 8 slices, you can see how there is no overlap in video playback. The overlap region slider also does nothing in this mode. Four-way is great for moving in grid-based games like Baba is You, swapping weapons in games like Dark Souls, or menu navigation. This is because it helps you eliminate accidental directions by not having the overlap zones. In either eight or four-way, the dead zone is a circle. The slider controls the size of that circle. The final layout this video will cover is Crossgate, which divides the touchpad like a tic-tac-toe board. The dead zone is the middle square, with cardinals and diagonals where you'd expect them to be from there. Crossgate prioritizes the cardinal directions while still maintaining the overlap zones for diagonals. You'll notice the overlap region slider is gone from this layout, which might seem odd at first. This is because the dead zone actually pulls double duty in this mode. 
The smaller the dead zone, the more the diagonals are emphasized. The larger the dead zone, the less the diagonals are emphasized. Crossgate is the premier layout for 2D platformers, as it normalizes the distance between opposing directions. For example, this means no matter how far up or down your thumb is on the touchpad, the distance between left and right remains the same. Haptics Intensity is the last main setting this video will cover. The Steam Controller doesn't have rumble motors, instead it uses haptic actuators that are attached to the bottom of the touchpads. These can do lots of fun things such as power on and off jingles, and can even emulate rumble, but more importantly they can give haptic bumps for feedback. The intensity setting determines how strong those bumps are. There is off, low, medium, high, and the default which is use activator settings. For use activator settings, you'll need to go into the actual bindings and then you can adjust the strength of the haptics on a per binding basis. Activator haptics are set to off by default, therefore use activator settings is by extension off by default. Feedback plays a crucial role in building the muscle memory needed to effectively use the touch d-pad, therefore anything other than off is preferred. The easiest way to set high haptics will be by setting the primary d-pad mode haptics intensity setting to high. And that finally addresses the comment I featured at the beginning of the video. If your argument is that the touchpads lack feedback, double check your haptic settings. And that's the basics of D-pad mode as it relates to the touchpads. Now for some tips and tricks. For dead zone settings, the larger the dead zone is, the more surface area you have to rest your thumb on and not send input. This can be good to prevent accidental inputs, but comes at the cost of speed. If the dead zone is too large, you may not be able to activate directions as fast as you would like. If you are using 8 or 4 way layouts, then the dead zone is easy to handle. As a beginner, you should have it no less than the default in order to maintain a place to rest your thumb, and then preferably as large as you are comfortable with in terms of not having a slow response. Crossgate is quite a bit trickier. Because the dead zone also influences the overlap region in this layout, it creates an interesting balancing act too large and the diagonals will be too hard to hit, too small and pure cardinals will be too hard to hit. The keep it simple approach is therefore highly recommended, leave it on the default. In either case, as your muscle memory develops, you can lower the dead zone for faster responses. Speaking of, muscle memory is the last topic I want to cover in this video. Muscle memory is actually way more important than any of the settings I've discussed thus far. Coming from a traditional controller with a traditional D-pad, my prior muscle memory was to keep up constant pressure if I wanted to keep moving in that direction. That doesn't translate well to a touch surface, because constant pressure caused my thumb to drift to the edge of the pad. That would snowball into constant overcorrection when wanting to change directions, and quickly wound up in a situation where even basic platforming tasks were exceptionally difficult. I imagine this is where most people rage quit and decided to call the touch d-pad unplayable garbage. But, like a new instrument, it is possible to learn how to use. To force myself to do said learning, I came up with a bowling lane bumper system. To set it up, you'll need to use features that would normally be outside the scope of this video. That means it will be a bit of a crash course for these features, so I'll also include a link to a profile with it already set up in the description. First, back out of the D-pad settings to the profile overview. From here, create a new action layer called Bowling Lane Bumpers. Quick crash course, when active, action layers overlay the default profile to change up several things while leaving others alone. Go back into the D-pad settings in the base config, click on additional settings, and go to the outer ring binding. Quick crash course, this is a zone that is a ring around the edge of the touchpad, and whenever your thumb enters that ring, it activates the binding. The radius determines how big the ring is, and inverting it makes it a center circle binding as opposed to an outer ring. Set the outer ring binding to apply the bowling lane bumper's action layer. back out to the profile overview and go into the action layer. 
Go into the D-pad settings here and change all of the bindings to the empty binding. Quick crash course, this binding literally does nothing. Go into additional settings and to the outer ring binding. Set it to remove the bowling lane bumper action layer and then invert it. What does this all accomplish in-game? If your thumb strays too far away from the center, you lose D-pad control. In order to regain it, you have to move your thumb back to the center of the touchpad. This destructive reinforcement encourages you to keep your thumb more centralized on the touchpad. You can adjust how punishing the system is in the base D-pad settings. By moving the outer ring radius slider to the left, that makes it more punishing. To the right, less punishing. When I first started playing with the system, I had a rough time as I started off with a rig to be pretty harsh, but it did accomplish the goal. I quickly started becoming more comfortable with the touchpad as I forced myself to stay centered, leading me to make the system less and less punishing until I eventually removed it altogether. At that point, I was about the same skill level as I was with a traditional D-pad, and I've only gotten better since as I've picked up speed too. I hope you do too. I also hope you found this video helpful and that it changed your mind about the Steam Controller's Touch D-Pad, at least enough to give it an honest chance if you're skeptical, or a second chance if you had previously rage quit. As a final note, this was a very basic overview of the D-Pad mode for the Touch Pad. If you'd like a more complete technical breakdown of the D-Pad mode and all of its capabilities, I highly recommend watching Critical Input's video on the subject, which I will link to in the description. Thanks for watching, and until next time, learn a new skill.